you know, I mean, there's so much to talk to. Uh, well, let me we, ask yeah, you this, we, Joey, because yeah. we have you here and we're very lucky to have you. And thank you for yeah. coming. If you could narrow it down to, you know, a few sentences, and I know that's not easy. What is for you um, the relevance of improv and helping you in your career? Well, improv, you have to be able to know how to talk to people. I mean, I, I, even not within, you know, you have to be able to, it's like being in an interview or talking or um, uh, it's just helped me just, I've always been able to talk, 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 but uh, you have to do it within the context of what the meeting is or yeah. who you're talking to or the producer or the casting director. And I mean, if you want to talk about jobs and or, or technique or any of that kind of stuff, um, maybe they want to ask me a question or something and I can well, answer that. Not so much. I really want to just be able to find and share with everybody kind of the experience. And I think that you did it right now. I think what's important, and I think what we can draw from what you're saying is improv gives you confidence when you naturally have a lot of talent to focus and kind of be flexible within all kinds of situations so you can continue to perform. Now, there are a lot of people that are here and joining us today that, hey, Keith, Keith Daniel, I'm going to bring you up too, um, uh, that don't have very little, have just a little exposure to it, let's say. They say yes, but little, um, a few classes. And so I want to take this opportunity to help people understand that including, and for me, in a bigger way than just including improv in your voiceover <laughs> journey, for lack of a better word, because everybody knows what that means, it actually gives you so much richness to what you're already doing. And I'm going to be sharing a whole bunch of stuff. So if you want to jump in at some point, Joey, you are you are welcome. We only have an hour, so I can't do an interview, which everybody should tune in to love that voiceover and find my interview with Joey. I think there are two or three episodes that he just tells you so much. And he wrote a book. What's the name of your book again? Oh, it was um, Laughing Through the Pain. Yeah, and that, yeah, that that tells you, you know, where he's coming from. Everybody comes from different places with different experiences into voiceover. And I, I think that the, the beauty of improv is that the circle kind of gets bigger in a way. You um, you learn a lot and you learn how whatever your life experiences are, you can bring it without being in therapy, in improv and play with everything that you are with uh, much more confidence. You learn to build that into your whole voiceover application, let's say voiceover skill base. Um, so some people, Keith, can you can you jump in? Are you on mute? I am not on mute now. There we go. <laughs> Are you not on video? I'm on video. Can you oh, okay, see me? Great. I, yes. No, I just have everybody in a row. So, so many folks. Of... Yeah. Awesome. Hello, yeah. hello, 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 hello. So you are in the weekly workout with us and you have been for some time. And tell us how that happened or just really briefly your improv and then your voiceover, because I know that's a different story than um, than Joey's. It is um, quite the opposite. In fact, I'm a I'm a, a newbie, a tenderfoot, if it were, to uh, <laughs> to voiceover. I'm about a I started coaching about a year and a half ago, but I have nearly 20 years of improv experience in the L.A. area. I live uh, just outside of L.A. Um, and I was having the hardest time connecting to scripts. I think this is crazy. This is, you know, I can right. do characters. I could do. Why can't I read this insurance commercial and sound <laughs> real and authentic? Right, right. Um, and so um, within a, less than six months, I found Rebecca and um, she's taught me to draw on those improv skills um, with a script in front of me. And that has made all the difference. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Connection. So, so what I want to add to that is... Um... When I got into doing love, uh, excuse me, voiceover improv or VO improv, you know, it, I was really in the desert seeking improv again because I was needing it and I couldn't find it, like I said, online. And what these guys are telling you is they have these deep, rich improv experiences that they brought to their voiceover. 
And what happened to me is I had dabbled in it and learned it, but then I realized uh, after doing a lot of studying that that was really what was helping me build my own confidence and be myself, which is what all the acting, the voiceover acting teachers were telling you you needed to do. And I realized, like I read about with Amy Poehler, um, this is how you can find a way through and get in to be yourself and play and and then you apply other rules that are for voiceover, you know? So you, you bring it all in together and you develop your excellence in that way. So thank you everybody for sharing with me. Um, does anybody else wanna say anything about their own experience? Because I wanna move forward, but I'm willing to like give it a, a 30 seconds or something. Anybody wanna say something? Anybody wanna join in? Please do. Rebecca, Tina has a hand up. Great, thank you, Tina. Please share. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are, ma'am. Oh, okay. Um, I just, I just wanted to say, I've never had any improv experience, but I know that a lot of casting directors, when I've done not a lot, but people, um, several casting directors have said, "Ad lib during your second take." Yes. So yes. that's very similar to improv, right? I consider it the same. I consider it an aspect of improv, uh, okay. ad libbing. And I think it's really important. And we'll we'll talk about some examples of that. Um, I think that good voiceover actors are always ad libbing to some degree, and they don't really consider it improv in a formal sense. Um, Can I add one thing, Rebecca? That I, yeah, that, Joey. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. What you're talking about here uh, on the second take, like a lot of times you'll get from my agent. I'll get, I have agents all over the country, but I'll get like copy, and it'll say the, the, read the first take. Uh, normally, and then the second take, sometimes a lot of times, not a lot of time, maybe half the time, if if it's like a fun thing or whatever, it'll say you can add lib. So you can add lib in the copy. And that's where improv will come out uh, for voiceover. Because a lot of times you're, you'll get copy from whoever the casting person is that your agent sends you to read for. And it'll say on the second take, feel free to add lib, feel free to add your own take to it so you might change the words around and that's where improv comes in absolutely you know, uh, for, for the audition and, and and that helps them see the casting director see that only not only can you read the copy but when you go in if you book the job you'll be able to like add something to it that the that the client might like because the client will be listening also yeah. or will be in the room depending on where you're doing the the, the you, you book the job exactly so that's improv helps exactly uh, with voiceover Right. And I just want to add that because I thought of that one when she was saying, when Tina was saying that. Yes, Tina, that's a very good point. It's absolutely true. And improv will help you feel more comfortable doing that if you're not doing it. And also find new ways to play and do it in a way that's natural for you, sometimes without even thinking anymore. So right. ad libbing is just these little bits of, and we're, we're going to talk about this in more specifics. Um, so that's one way. Moving to my next point here, improv is relevant to VO. Ad libbing is a big part of it. And awesome. I think what, what Keith has learned a lot too, because we've been playing for a while now on a weekly basis, um, is, is that um, everybody, if you have other talking going on, if you could just mute yourself, that'd be real cool. Um, ad libbing is a way of playing within the script and the way I like to describe it for people is when you think of improvisation you think maybe of comedy or you think of people up on a stage right can I see some head nods is that right yeah I mean we think of whose line is it anyway was which was what this great television show was and you could watch it on YouTube um or you just think of stand-up comedy like where Joey got a huge amount of his uh experience um but not everybody is an entertainer like that. Not everybody feels comfortable with, with um, I'm, I'm gulping because that's me. I'm not an entertainer. I don't see myself getting up and doing stand-up comedy. And I want to perform though. And I want to be an actor. So improv is relevant to VO in ways that you can gain confidence in what you're doing. Find ways to be you, which is what, like I said, all the acting, the voiceover acting coaches, be you, just be natural. How many th times have we seen in the specs for any voiceover gig authentic? Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Natural, n conversational, not announcery, right? And so 
how do you get there, right? That was one of the things that Keith was even saying with all his years of improv experience, how do you blend that into voiceover? Well, think of the script as your improv partner. The text is your partner, right? And that way you can dance around the text and be you within the text and in the spaces. So I always say there on the page, on your desktop, it's probably a white paper with black text. And what you do is you look at the text as your partner and all that white space is your area to play. And that's how you bring yourself to make it personal, to find out ways to do that. And I have tools that you can leave with today that you can come and practice with us in workouts or take a class. Um, where else is it relevant in the business? Well, Joey mentioned something. He said it's in the sessions where you can play around and you get a sense. It's in auditions when you have a chance and they're specifically asking you to improv or ad lib, right? Correct. Uh, okay, well, I think I'm going to move on here. It's used in or supports everything we do in improv. It does support or help you with short and long form. That's ads, explainers, audiobooks, e-learning, promos, the least probably in promos, and ADR. ADR is when you're watching a film and you're replacing dialogue. It's dialogue replacement. And you have to um, either be, um, what is that background sound called? Walla. Walla Walla, yeah. The, the background noises like in a restaurant of people talking about this, well, yeah, and you don't really say anything, but you make noise that's going to be heard in the background, but you're watching a scene so you know kind of where you are. So then in character voices, obviously everybody knows this one, animation, it's going to help you play, it's going to help you create characters. Well, where's my Ida? Yeah, there she is. Um, honey, I learned Ida. She was, uh, she's Long Island, uh, New York, and... Uh, I learned her in a in a, a theater, dinner theater, but she's become part of me, you see? And then you can learn other characters too, and you can play with them. Joey, you've got 5,000 characters. You've done so much. Yeah, well, ADR is, you know, when you go into, uh, well, I don't know if they do it online these days, but the stuff I did is more like at Warner Brothers or... Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, well, you go into these big films like I've done, like uh, yeah. you don't get you don't get screen credit or anything. You just get paid. But right. <laughs> it'd be 20 guys in a room like this movie I did. One of them I did was like called 300 with what's his name, that Gerard Butler dude. And they call all this guy uh, like 18 people in the room and you'll have to like play a guard fighting someone. Or, right. And you have to right. like ad lib or right. grunting or whatever. Or right. I did big friendly, big friendly giant. There's three giants yeah. in this big friendly giant. I played one of the giants just doing the grunts. So right. they hire people. They hire people to do grunt. So you have right. to know it's grunt work the officially. The, the way the character's moving, you have to groan or munt or or, or move. so you just yeah. Sound you make moves. So yeah. in and in video games, so animation and video games are very similar in that way, where you're going to probably play these weird characters or these non-normal characters. So you're not. You're, it's like the opposite of um, commercial and and narrative work. You're playing some thing that's maybe designed in, in visual that you can see and you, you adapt your body to be like video games as well as animation. And you might be just doing small characters that are the voices of noise, audible, I call that, the audible noises that they're going to make, physical noises, physical audibles. Um, and audiobooks. Uh, sometimes you're going to have characters in audiobooks. So in that sense, it's different than the narrative form of audiobook. And um, there are several people that have been in my workouts over time that have really found improv helping them jump into those audiobooks and jump into those different characters, even from character to character, relatively quickly because of their flexible skills that they've learned by just practicing improv. Anybody want to add anything else about improv and where it is relevant? I'm going to look for any hands. I think I have everybody open, so that's good. All right, cool. So it's totally relevant in many ways. And now I wanna play a little bit. I wanna warm up in this safe place and let your intuition and imagination free you and enjoy and laugh at any mistakes we make. So we're gonna play Lion and Mouse, then Baby Boo, and then one to 10. And Lion and Mouse and Baby Boo, we all do at the same time. So it'll seem a little chaotic, but just go through the process, right? 
And then one to 10 is a game we actually try to play together in the same room, let's say, right? So lion and mouse is your, your, just about your face. <clears throat> it's a warm up. So you're gonna be, be as large as you can like a lion and then mini, 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 mini like a mouse. And you can make noises, you can make audibles while you do this. And this is more of a warm up. So everybody, biggest lion, uh, open your mouth, open your mouth, uh, growl like a, uh, 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 Laughing like a lion. Tiny like a mouse. Tiny like a mouse. Big like a lion. Okay, <laughs> some of you are playing along. <laughs> now, this is a nice warm up because it helps you stretch out and warm up. Baby boo. Mm -hmm. Baby boo is when we start out, everybody's going to do a newborn sound. Newborn sound, I got this from Debbie Derryberry. A newborn sound is a grunt or a gurgle. Then we're going to go to three months, which are short coos, then six months, which are longer coos, and a little laugh. And then nine months, it's a babble, you know, the babbling talk, a mix of all of it, right? So let's do our baby newborn grunt gurgle. <laughs> now let's move to three months short coos. Six months longer coos. And now nine months babbling it all. And now we'll try to play a game together. So everybody who wants to play, just come off of mute. Everybody who just wants to watch and play, it's safe. Gosh darn it, okay. Put yourself on mute. It's one to 10. Does anybody know how to play this game? Keith, you know how to play. So this play, this game seems like it's so easy, but it's super hard. We're all gonna count to one to 10, but we can't duplicate anything. So if I call one, and Keith says two, and then Sion and Jeffrey both say three at the same time. Got to go back to one. And you got to start all over again. So if there's any duplicates of the same number by any two people, or three or four or five, because I don't know how many people are going to play right now, then you have to go back to one. Let's try. One. Two. Three. 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 One. What? Two. Three. Back to one. Two. Three. Three. Back to one. Two. Two. Three. No, we got to go back to one. <laughs> one. Two. Two. Oh. One. Three. So that's a tough game. Now I'm going to stop us there. <laughs> um, the bigger the group is, the harder it is. There's a secret to playing this game. It's trying to find a rhythm. And the reason I, I like to have this game in our free webinar is because mm -hmm. finding rhythm is also a big feature of playing and practicing and learning improv in whatever order you want to sit learning and then practicing and then doing it frequently. Finding rhythm in things is a way that you can also use it in your script. And uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of the rule of threes. A lot of voiceover actor teachers teach about the rule of threes. These are rhythms. And improv helps you pick up on rhythms that you might find. All right, let's go to the next slide. Which then brings me to the basics of improv that you can get in any kind of book you can read about this. It's the mantra of improv. It's yes and. The yes part is simply saying it's true. What that person just said or did is true. You're confirming. And the and part 
is adding something in that flow, in that same vein. You're building on a brick with the next cement layer and ready for the next brick to go on. So you're adding something that fits. That's the mantra of improv. And that's the baseline of concepts or theory. And it's so simple, but it's not always easy to do, which is fine. So when you want to improvise to create, we keep that yes and always in the background of our mind. We're always trying to remember to agree, confirm. It's not always agree because you can disagree on a more sophisticated level, but to confirm and not deny. Hey, Keith or, or Joey, are you still here? Yeah, okay. Yes. Um, what's, a, what's a denial? If I say, hey, that's a nice hat on, you, brand new blue fur hat, beautiful. You could say, no, it's not. It's a such and such or such and such. You, you, you would change what I said, right? You would say it's, right. it's, yeah, you can just, it's, it's a felt it's red hat. Making What's up wrong with you? you? Want yeah. And arguing. Yeah, or, yeah. Know, it's like arguing. It's <laughs> denying. Now, what would a yes and response be to my saying that you have a nice, beautiful, red, furry hat? Well, I mean, blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's just an example. Um, what you can do when you're thinking about scripts and voiceover because we need to kind of create a world in the place that we're going to pretend where we're talking so you want to create a world you want to think of where you are we're going to practice this a little bit you're going to create characters in it and then you're going to figure out what those characters are doing or you in a voiceover script when you apply it to scripts directly. But today we're not going to focus too much on that. We're going to just think about improvising and talking about how it goes with voiceover. And then when those characters are doing this thing, why is it important? Because part of what we are doing in all of our work in voiceover is there's always something important underlying the script that we're reading, whether it's long form or short form. And this all applies to your voiceover interpretation but also improv helps you practice this without a script which gets your really gets you really in the flow of being able to do it quicker having lots of imagination and creativity flow within you and then being able to apply it to scripts all right with that in mind let's create a world together so one word suggestion with a kind of place or location anybody jungle a jungle excellent key thank you so now for the next 20 seconds everybody i want you to make a noise representing a jungle and quietly and leave space for others yes thank you go <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Bravo. Applause for you all. Now for the next minute or so, let's name things randomly. Everybody can speak up that are in this jungle. Things that are tangible that you could be, touch or smell. Vines. Moss. Moss. Ferns. Lines. Bananas. Bananas. Tree branches. Trees. Great. Bugs. A Bugs. slithery snake. A slithery Water. snake. Webs. A Spiders. Monkeys. What's in the atmosphere? What kind of smells? Humid. Water. Humid smells. What are those? Flowers. Blossoms. Oh. Decomposing mahogany. Decomposing <laughs> dead bugs. Decomposing <laughs> monkey arm. <laughs> Uh, air quality dense with humidity, time of day, high noon, but it doesn't feel like it because there's a canopy over us. So you know that it's light out, but there's still deeper, darker forest beneath. Time of year, we're at the equator, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, we're in the jungle, we got a sense of it. What kind of character can we create to be there? An explorer. Um, what was that? An explorer. 
Great. We have an explorer. Can we add something to that explorer specifically? Somebody else. Photographer. A uh, photographer explorer. Great. And let's say there's a slithering snake that I know somebody else mentioned earlier. Um, now, with these two characters, what's important about today in the jungle? And you can make this up. There's not a right answer, okay? <laughs> it's the last day in the jungle. Surviving. His, I have to get the shot. It's his last day in the jungle, and he has to get this shot because... Somebody add to that because National Geographic is on a timeline. There you go. Excellent. Okay. So now, what is this guy's name? Al. George. Paul. I heard George. I think I might have heard Al before that. So let's call him Al George. All right. The photographer's name is Al George. And now we have this slippery snake as our other character. Anybody want to define what kind of snake this is? An albino snake. An albino boa constrictor is what I heard. Yes, excellent. <laughs> and what is somebody else say? What is the snake's name? Sid. Sylvester. Lucifer. <laughs> Sylvester or Sid? I, I don't know who came first in that one, so uh, we'll go with Sylvester. So we have two characters now. You defined your world. You have an urgency for Al George, but we know that Sylvester, the slippery snake is gonna have some interaction with Al George. That's setting up a scene using improv to create a world, create characters in it. What are they doing and why is it important? We don't quite know yet what the snake is doing except that he's slithering around. That's just an example of creating some characters and building a world. Let's go to improvise to create version two. Again, this is another tool you can use taking those same ideas, but creating this kind of grid that makes it easy to remember. Who's there? What are they doing? Where are they? Why are they there? What's important about it? You just did that, right? So this is a tool and it doesn't have to be in any particular order. It just depends on the game that you're gonna play. And you can use this tool with what? VO. Uh, with anything. what in VO? With your voiceover scripts. That's right. That's right. Who said that, Tina? Yes, thank you. That's exactly right. So let's go to playing another game. Improv without words. Meaning we aren't using a script, not without words that we're going to speak. Okay, that's my error, my bad. It's without a script. Who, what, where, why game. So we're going to use this little chalkboard. Oh, did I have my hand up? Why do I have my hand up? I don't know. Um, <laughs> at that, I don't know how that happened. Um, so we're going to play the who, what, where, why game. And the first thing that you do is you name a who. So you give it a name, Al George. And the full name, so first name, last name. The second thing is doing what? Taking photos in the jungle for a, a, a National Geographic. Uh, we already answered where we had two in that answer he's doing what he's taking photos for national geographic where in the jungle in the deep heart of it at high noon why now because it's his last day and he needs that special shot of the slithering snake right another sample i have there for you i did in the in the past i really just ad-libbed it it was or improv it it was joanne jonas stitching a quilt on her living room couch and it's important because it's grandma's memorial tonight yeah so let me just, um, if you don't mind, take yourself and keep yourself off mute. If you want to play, I'll just call names and say, give me number one. That's the who, full name. Give me number two, doing what? Three is where, getting specific as you can and have fun with that. Get as detailed as you like. It's, it's just gorgeous when you do that. And why now? Same there. So just be as specific and playful as you like. Um, let's start down at the bottom. I see Jennifer, number one. So are we making a new scenario? No, it's a new scenario. Yeah, okay. you're just going to give me a brand new who with the full first name, last name. Okay. Uh, Taylor Jensen. Taylor Jensen. Yvette, doing what? What is Taylor Jensen doing? Taking a walk in the park. Taking a walk in the park. Great. So we have a kind of aware. Tina, let's get more specific on the park. Taylor Jensen, taking a walk in the park. Add to the park. Uh, looking at the puppies. Great. Okay. Okay. And Gwen, 
Why is this important? Why now? Because it's her last day of vacation. Okay, great, great. Now what you can do is you can add, you had some puppies, so you wanna build on what you've already been given, right? You're in a park, there are puppies. What else could be a why now? Even if it's the last day of her vacation, what could you add to that to make it even more urgent? Because she's, puppies. About, because she's thinking about buying a puppy. Because she, she's going to adopt one and take it home with her today. There you go. Excellent. Yeah. So you see how you can build on what you've already heard. And that's what you want to do. You want to build like a building of a house or building some kind of construction project, adding things together. Great. Um, can, I make a, can I make a comment why this is yes. important? Yes, sir. Okay. See, this is important because you, a lot of times you'll get copy to read for uh, an audition. And it'll, it'll they'll tell you, uh, this is Bob, he's a uh, social worker, and they don't, and, and, and it'll tell you his age, but they won't give you any specifics. But I mean, sometimes they do, and there's not enough. So right. this is a tool to use where you can create the specifics for yourself, and it will give your read more flavor, more uh, feeling. And believe me or not, they can, casting directors can hear if you're just reading your words or you're really putting a lot of things into it because it comes through in your voice. So that yeah. this is a very useful tool, um, the who, what, where, and why. And it's the same, same like when you're doing an acting in a scene in a theater or, or, or a movie, it's the same thing for voiceover, creating that for the character and that will come through your voice. So you ever see an actor who's just like, looks like they're reading their lines, they didn't do this work. Right. You can voiceover, you can hear it in acting, you can yes. hear it in sitcom. They just sound like a clown reading, 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 reading copy, and they got the job because they look good or something. You right. Know, and so we, we don't have that advantage. We're not yeah, being you don't seen. have that. So this is a very good tool. This, this is a good refresher for me and just listening because you'll see when you get voiceover copy uh, that you'll read the, the description of what they want is not that great. It's just very min minuscule. So this is a good tool to use. Uh, to make that copy pop for the whoever's hearing it, the client, pop the cat, is the right. Go, hey, I like this guy. I That's like this. Right. Book. You know, yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. So th I just wanted to add that, you know. Thank uh, you. That's, no, that's see, that's see, absolutely see. correct. True. Yeah. And I have even yeah. been told, hey, we listened to like, you know, 50 auditions and we picked you because you were just bringing something to it. You were bringing some yeah. life and some personality to it. So you right. got to see that comes and, in handy. and stand out against all the competition. If they're just reading, it's just about your voice. It's not about your voiceover is not just about your voice. Sure, you got to have the technical and you got to be able to speak and read, but it's more than that. It's acting. And this is a way to get into acting and have fun while you're doing it. Thank you, Joey. Thank you very yeah. much. No, it's good to now we're going to do another interactive. This is a with a script, but it's only a partial script. So let's join with, um, let's see, who hasn't played yet? Jeffrey, did you play? Jeffrey and I can't see that your name. I have to move my. Mm. There we go. Jeffrey and Ron and Keith and Joey and Jack. One, two, three. Jeffrey gets the first line. Ron gets the second line. Keith gets the third line. Joey gets the fourth line. Jack, fifth line. Andrew gets the sixth line. How many lines are there? And Gwen gets the last. Do you want to play Gwen? You get the last, you, you're freaking out over there. You can do the last line. So in the end, all right, so Perfect. we're going to, we're going to talk about Al George. We already know about him. We already set this up. He's in the jungle. There's a slippery snake named Sylvester. And we understand where we are in the jungle and what it's like in the jungle and who he works for and what his urgency is. But we're going to tell the story using partial script to kick off. Remember again, we're also building on adding something, confirming what we just heard, adding to it, but we're starting by having to start with these words. So we're gonna, remember I said, if you make mistakes, who cares, just laugh it off. You know, like they, they say, shake it off and get back up again, right? So Jeffrey, I think you're the person that's starting. Is that correct? Oops. And, and you're just going to finish the sentence, so speak a little louder because it was really hard to see you and do it one more time. Once there was a guy named Al George who was a photographer 
and he was on assignment, and his deadline was getting near. And now Ron. And every, <clears throat> and every day he searched the jungle for a slithering, slippery snake named Sly. <laughs> Keith? Until, yeah. until one day, he met the largest, most duplicitous albino snake in the jungle in Congo. Which meant that if he doesn't get this shot, he might lose his job because this is a tremendous snake that needs to be photographed and shown to the public. And he could get fired if he doesn't get it. Which meant that if he got fired, he would lose his house, which is in the process of being foreclosed upon. <laughs> Which meant that he would be stuck in the jungle forever. <laughs> so in the end, Al George was very, very thorough and very sure that he was going to take the best photograph of the largest, most incredible albino snake the world has ever seen. And he did. He, and he, so in the end, he got that picture of that slimy Sylvester boa constrictor albino, which the world praised him for, and he became rich. <laughs> so what you can do at the end is the hard one because you want to kind of bring it all to a climax and pull everything together, which is really fun. So in this way, and you can take this and run with this, you play with the practice of knowing where you are, who you are, what your situation is, and creating a story that goes along with it, partially with script. So it's a way to practice. You see that? Be inspired, be fearless, be specific. The more specific you are, and this is what we go through in our classes and in our workouts, we're constantly re reminding ourselves of it. And I teach this in the 101 class, more specific, the more fun it is for you. And as an actor or as a person, the more you imagine the specifics, what do you think happens? The more you paint the picture. And that helps you do what? Get into the, Give a better the story. Yeah. All of what you guys just said. Yes. Excellent. Yes. And better yet. Uh, well, and in addition. Yes. Um, it allows you to create stakes for your character. Yes, lot. yes. You know, in this case, uh, Al George was going to lose his house, right? Um, yes. So there are always some stakes in all the copy that we read. But, you know, the, the PSA for, uh, for a fentanyl overdose seems like it has higher stakes than the microwavable macaroni packet. But if you have teenage kids or you're a character, a parent who has teenage kids, there are some significantly high stakes in, in microwavable macaroni, right? And, yeah, so and that the can, convenience and speed and all that stuff. So good it, points. The last bit of that character development can be the, the, the character's want. And that is can really drive um, right, and that can be part of the answer to why is that important now. So maybe the why is that important now includes not only that he's going to lose his house, but also that this is his last day while in the jungle. So it's a combination of factors. The more specific and the more detailed you get, the more you have a compelling urge and instinct inside you to interpret what you're going to be saying with their words. So what you're trying to do is use improv to help you interpret what the words are so that they make sense to you and have a sense of the kind of urgency that's appropriate, as well as the emotion that you feel is important and achieves the end that the script is trying to as well. So let me just also say um, before I get to the next piece, um, the script always has a reason for being, right? Whether it's a commercial ad or whether it's a character in a video game, there's always a purpose for these elements that we're being auditioning for and, and being booked on. And what's important about when you're auditioning and practicing is understanding what that is. So script interpretation is another skill for voiceover. And I want to separate that from improv, because what we want to do is blend those skills, but improv is a separate skill. Okay. 
you definitely want to do um, script interpretation and understanding how scripts are written and the importance of different parts of them, et cetera, et cetera, with a, with, you know, you want to learn that aspect of it too. All right. Improv does transfer to voiceover. And I want to see if I can share with you some examples of that. Um, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to do some technical stuff here. So I'm going to, can you see this partial script right now? Hmm? Or no? I can see part of the partial script. Right. Okay. So let me just shrink it down a little bit. Ah. All right. So this is, I'm going to scroll a little bit. This is First Republic Bank. Um, this is from 19, uh, excuse me, uh, 2014. And our group workout leader, Mike Robles, is the one who booked it. Um, but what I wanted you to see is this. It's a long 60 second commercial. Um, and I'm going to show you just the most of the script here, the most important part. And then I'm going to play for you the audition and you're going to hear things that are improvised, ad libbed. And he's a huge improvis uh, improvisation practitioner. So let me just find that. There it is. Okay. Now what I want to try to, you should be able to hear my computer audio. So I'm going to play it now. I've just had the craziest. Can you hear that? Okay, yes. great. Thank you for nodding. I'm going to start it over again. Here we go. This is the final 60, the one that um, they aired. I've just had the craziest week. You'd never believe it. The day I was supposed to go sign my first mortgage, there was this huge car accident on my commute. Check this out. The bridge that led to the nearest First Republic Bank was closed. Traffic was bumper to bumper. I mean, it seemed impossible I'd be able to get there by the end of the business day. I'm telling you, I was freaked. I had no idea what would happen if I didn't sign the papers on time. So then I get a call from my personal banker. He says, Dennis from the nearest First Republic has a bike and is en route. No kidding. So this guy shows up, has me sign the documents and takes them back to First Republic Bank on a bike. I mean, if that's not service, I I'm not sure what is. So thanks First Republic, you helped me get my first home under unbelievable circumstances. Personal life. Okay, I'm just gonna stop there. So do you feel like he's a real person talking to you in that when you hear it? Yeah, totally. And you feel his inflections moving up and down and, uh, and this stuff like that, right? He puts a lot of personality into it. Right. He's making it as real as possible for himself. Um, and he believes that this is this and his he's booking for Denny's. He's booking all kinds of stuff. Um, this is all related to his focus on improv. He does improv about three times a week and he's gone through Second City many times, all their levels. I don't care about any of that as long as we understand how we're using it in the scripts and how we're transferring our own personality into what we're doing, because that's the only way you're going to stand out from other people. That's the, that's the way you're going to do it by finding ways to be you, to use what they've created and then add, add, add yourself without changing what they've done. And then it's up to them who they choose. Yeah. All right. Here's another example. Let me close that. And I'm going to play you an audition I did for What Not to Flush. Here we go. Your toilet's not a trash can or a place where you toss cotton swabs, paper towels, tissues, or floss. And what about so-called flushable wipes? The answer is no. They get stuck in your pipes. And now that you have a big problem with plumbing, that problem keeps coming and coming and coming. Clogs lead to backups that make a big mess in your home, in your neighborhood. That is unless you don't toss in tampons, cat litter, or trash. Not even a goldfish gets flushed with a splash. Toilet paper is one thing that can go in the loo. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. 30 seconds is enough. You get a sense of where I'm going with that, right? You see how I'm playing? You hear what I'm doing with my voice and I'm simply just working with the script and how silly it all seemed, right? And here is the, let me just make this fit in the screen. This is the final, I think this is the 30 second. There was a, a 15, a 30 and a, a 60. 
Now this is the minute. All right, well, here we go. Your toilet's not a trash can or a place where you toss cotton swabs, paper towels, tissues, or floss. And what about so-called flushable wipes? The answer is no. They get stuck in your pipes. And now that you have a big problem with plumbing, that problem keeps coming and coming and coming. Clogs lead to backups that make a big mess in your home and your neighborhood. That is, unless... You don't toss in tampons, cat litter, or trash. Not even a goldfish gets flushed with a splash. Toilet paper. And that's kind of the same area of the audition you heard to the actual final. So again, in this case, you hear, you know, the inflection and that's who they choose. You never know who they're going to choose and why. But if you're yourself and you're giving your all to it, um, you definitely can get somewhere. And improv really gives you a great platform to spring from. All right. So improv, I'm not going to give the third one because I just wanted to give two and we're running out of time. I want to promise to stay to an hour. Improv transfers to VO. You learn and you practice and in a little tiny print there it says frequently, <laughs> at least weekly. And that helps you develop excellence with your skills, with your confidence, and with your choices. One of the things we didn't talk a lot about was the flexibility and the ability to make lots of different choices on the fly. And improv helps you make changes on the fly and come up with new ideas fast as well. So, and also, can, I, can I add one thing? Uh, one yes, thing, sir, sorry, of like, course. When you, when you uh, uh, sometimes when you, you might book a job and then they'll ask you to do something entirely, you booked it and you got the job, but then they'll send you some copy that you didn't even see. And your improv skills and your uh, confidence will help you. It'll ask you to do an entirely different character. It'll ask you to do, I mean, it, it, you still have the job, but it's something else. Now we decided that the, 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 the client came in and said he wants you to read this instead. And wow. if you have the confidence and the, and, the, and the experience, you'll be able, it's no big deal. You're still getting paid. You just, <laughs> yeah. just, you just still do wh whatever they told you. You kind of, yeah. like, you know, so th that's another thing too that happens. In, well, in yeah, more frequently than people say. Yeah, know. and let me add to that, Joey, because that happened to me uh, in the last six months, and I'm yeah. working on an animation show right now. They're uh -huh. they're making it out of Germany, and uh -huh. when I did the first audition, it was in the summer of last year. Um, they had me audition for one particular character, but they had yeah. me also audition for two other characters okay. um, during the audition, which were totally unexpected. I was unprepared for, and. Um, you know, then what happened was I didn't book for the audition that I'd prepared for that the first character was, but I booked the other yeah. two characters. So I'm yeah. doing these other two characters on this animated yeah. TV show, which I don't know when it will air, so I can't say anything about it right now. But that yeah. process is exactly what you just described. Yeah, that yeah. happens. It happens more than people know. You know, yeah. I, mean, I did some stuff for farmers insurance and like. Oh no no no! Just do the. I have to do a southern voice instead of a, a southern character. Oh, that's to, great! Yeah, as opposed to the the uh, natural speaking voice, and they're like, I right. don't care. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So um, here's how you can continue doing improv. I also, you know, tell people, hey, if you want to go do in person improv, get your improv however you can. And you can come join us if you've got some experience. If you want to take a class, I teach one on one. Improv 101 for voiceover. It's coming up twice a year only. So the next one is on in April uh, for three weeks, three weeks, three different days, but you come to all three sessions. And uh, it's a very small group intensive, only six people maximum. And there's a discount if you join uh, by the end of March or by that date, March 28th. What questions are there? I want to, I want to hear what questions you have or thoughts you might have about hearing what you've heard. Anybody? Jeffrey, if you're talking, we need you to speak up louder. I'm not sure where the microphone is on this computer. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, my question is, uh, taking a piece of copy, how far can you go in terms of adding words to something? I mean, I understand adding asterisks, pauses, and emphasis, and, you know, things like that. Uh, in your experience, what? Uh, how far can you go if you're changing a phrase? It depends. 
that's the biggest answer that you can get. That's really, really clear. It really varies. Um, sometimes you're submitting, I'll give you some examples of different scenarios. Um, and Joey, you can jump in too. Um, in some cases, you'll be submitting to an agent who has told you already, don't ad lib, don't change the script, don't do it. Don't do it then. In other cases, they'll say, hey, um, I'd love you to ad lib. I know you're really good at improv. So just put a spin on your second take. Sometimes you don't have the ability to be working with somebody like an agent and you'll be on your own. So everybody's always told me, put your strongest take first and whatever that is, and then put maybe a clean take in there too that's more um, not modifying the script. Yeah, Joey? You know, yeah, you, you, you don't really, if it doesn't say you can ad lib on the second take, don't ad lib on the first take and just do it because you realize a guy wrote this a woman wrote this a man woman wrote this and they want to hear their words they have egos just like everybody else yes. so they want to hear how good you are with their words also then, legal you know, there are legal issues sometimes where they just yeah, know that exactly. they can't there's so many approvals of that it's gone through you're not going to you're not right. going to win by changing it don't worry about that at all just you know get the just do it as written you know and that's what they want to hear unless you're a celebrity and they don't care and they're hired you anyway. or, they, or, or it's an improv specific audition which often happens too right sometimes um, you'll get copy where it's like it'll be like a bird or a, a dog and you have to yep. there's no copy you just have right. to bark in a certain yeah. tone or an attitude yeah. and that's yeah. the character yeah and that's what your audition is so there's yeah. some guy listening some girl listening uh, hearing people go, oh, oh, yeah. you, know, you, know, you have to listen to that. Six, 100 auditions of that. So, I mean, so you're trying to stand out at the same yeah, time, yeah, follow yeah. their rules. Yeah, so and that's, really why, to, yeah, that's right. why practicing improv on a frequent basis helps you develop the excellence to be able to have some instincts about that. That kind of stuff comes with time. There's no hard and fast rule. That's why I answered first with the primary answer, it depends. Yeah. Good question, Jeffrey. Well, before we close it out, I mean, I'm happy to stay here and answer some more questions. I just want to let those who are listening or, or who need to go, we've hit our hour and we completed our task of uh, sharing things with you. Here you have on screen um, how you might be able to continue with me. If you enjoyed today, I would love to get to know you better and uh, help you along your improv journey. Um, you know, email me and we can do a, a Zoom consult for like a 30 minute or whatever, just to t a chat and, and get to know you a little bit better. Um, does anybody have another question that are two or three? Tina. I have a question. Um, you were talking about the workouts. Um, is it best to actually take the class first and then get into the workouts? Yeah. I mean, if you don't have any improv experience, it's right. a requirement. Right. You okay. can't join the monthly workout unless you have experience. This is a, a pretty, pretty astute group, and we're trying to push ourselves hard. So uh, we do definitely need people with some some background to join okay, that. Cool. I have done okay. custom workouts as listed there too. If you had people that wanted to meet at a certain time, I know Michael is in California, so he can work on a different schedule than I can. And I've worked with people in Australia. I did about a two month program with a, a bunch of actors out of Australia. I've done some one on ones for folks. Um, yeah, so it just depends what you're looking for. And like I said, there's a class I give improv one on one for voiceover for people who are really beginners or really rusty. I've had people come through that have really appreciated getting back into it that way. Um, what other questions are there? If they're in chat, I hope not. But if you have to go, I totally understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Anybody else? I just wanted to know, how do you populate your booth? Because <laughs> we're all working in this little space. Yeah, and... with your imagination, with your creativity. Uh, okay. With your flexibility of being open to play. It's like being a kid again. And that's what improv helps you do too. It helps you think. If you're a parent, think of when you're raising the little kids. A lot of... Um, ladies that I know have these instincts fantastically because they're running around and trying to work with their children of various ages and and, and dads too, who, who are just like that improv comes to them almost naturally because of the struggles in their daily lives to pay, to get their kids to pay attention <laughs> and grab, you know, and grab their focus. What else? Anybody? 
Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming very, very much and being here live and playing along with some of the games. And uh, if you didn't play along with some of the games, I hope that you'll have more courage and um, a, a more confidence next time. And I hope to see you and get to know you better. And thank you again for coming. I'm going to close it out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. 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 For uh, anything else. All right. Ciao for Arrivederci. Now. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. <laughs> Be well, y'all. Ciao, honey. Ciao. Ciao. Mwah, mwah, ciao, ciao. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs>